In my hand, I have the Canon Pocket Cinema Camera Raw, and in today's video, we're gonna do a quick run through and all the modes that I've set up for it. You know, the 1080 mode, 2.5K, 2.8K, 5K anamorphic, 5K time lapse. Let's get into it. I just wanna let you guys know before we get into this actual video that I shot a short film on the Canon EOS M. Okay, well let's just say I attempted a short film. I mean, I didn't finish it. I wasn't planning on completing it. What I wanted to see was if it was possible to shoot a short film on the Canon EOS M before I make an actual full one. So this is pretty much like a demo, just a test to see what this thing was capable of. Now I've got to say I'm really pleased. I shot with three Zeiss Prime lenses. They're all vintage glass, so no autofocus and it was all shot by me. I had no camera crew, I had no lighting people, I didn't use lighting around here. Uh, so all just natural stuff, which I think is pretty cool. And for the audio, I just used the Rode Wireless Go, so nothing special, and that pretty much did the job for me. So if you wanna see that video, I'll leave a time code at the top. Just remember, it's unfinished. Now I've been testing out a whole range of different lenses on the Canon EOS M. For example, the Apollo 25mm f1.9 lens. It's a C-mount lens. It will vignette on normal APS-C cameras, but uh, thanks to Magic Lantern RAW, you can use these crop modes in the high resolution and there'll be no vignetting, so you can bring back life to these old pieces of equipment. I've been testing out some anamorphic glass on the Canon EOS M, such as the 2x adapters and the 1.33x. You get the beautiful flares, the beautiful bokeh, uh, just the beautiful compression that you get from anamorphic adapters. It's really fantastic stuff. Highly recommend trying different lenses on the Canon EOS M to find the combos that you like. But from what I experienced, I think C-mount lenses are fantastic to use. Now some people say, why don't you get a real camera? I do, I have the Ursa Mini 4.6K and as you can see, it's a massive heavy beast, but I absolutely love this camera. It's got 12 bit color depth, it's got 15 stops or dynamic range, and you can just get really cinematic footage out of this camera. Now, it's definitely not something I wanna take around with me all the time because it's heavy. Um, so when I'm with friends and family, I would much prefer to take out the Canon EOS M. All right, so with all that aside, let's go ahead and do a quick run through on all the settings that I've set for the Canon EOS M and Magic Lantern Raw. Now, as you guys know, I always leave my build settings in the description below for download. So go ahead and get that and load the settings on the Canon EOS M or just pretty much do it manually as we speak, whichever is easier for you. Now, the SD cards that I recommend is the SanDisk Extreme Pro. I've got the 64 gig and the 128 gig and they work absolutely fine. So they're the ones that I recommend in comparison to a whole range of different ones that you can get. So the first mode that I've set on the Canon EOS M is the 1080 mode. What this is good for is YouTube, short films, travel videos, pretty much just any general video that you want to capture. 1080 mode is the way to go. It is continuous and it shoots raw at a resolution of 1736 by 976. Now I've set it up to 16 by 9 because I think it's a really good aspect ratio for general use. You can always add a letterbox in post if you have to and it just gets really good resolution out of this camera. Now this mode does have aliasing, so what you can do is shoot wide open. Uh, you can shoot with vintage glass or you can enable chroma desatcha in MLV app. Set that to 100% and that should reduce the aliasing at the expense of the quality. I think it's fine, I've shot all my short films in the past with that on and no one has really noticed, so I think it's pretty good. Now for bit depth, I've selected 14 bit. That allows you to get all the color information out of the Canon USM RAW. And if you press the info button, that switches between global draw on and off. What that means is with Global Draw on, you can pretty much see everything on your live view. You know, you can see the shutter speed, the ISO, peaking, zebras, whatever you set, you can see with Global Draw on. So if you take that off, that's gonna pretty much remove everything from your live view. It's gonna make everything clean. Hopefully that should also help with using monitors so you don't get dropped frames, pink frames. So test it out and see how it goes. Now also in this mode, I've set shutter speed to 1 48th of a second. The way I've been able to do that is through image fine tuning. So if you play around with that, you can achieve 1 40th of a shutter. Now honestly, I don't mind shooting 1 50th, but just to stick with the rules and regulations of cinematography and being cool out in the field, 1 40th of a shutter I think is fine. Now the next mode we're gonna look at is custom preset two. This has been set to 2.5K raw video mode. Absolutely love this mode. It's great for short films, travel videos, B-roll. You get really clean footage, everything looks just sharp and detailed, 
And I've got to say, it's got to be one of my favorite modes to use on the Canon USM RAW. Now I've set it 2.35 to 1 aspect ratio. This is continuous RAW at 2.5K. If you do want 16 by 9, then that's always an option at 2.2K RAW where it's continuous. Now, if you don't need continuous, you can go back to 2.5K, but then you get around, I don't know, 20 seconds or less. Also down towards the bottom, you can see SD overclock. I've set that to 160 megahertz. I just think that's a sweet spot for me. Obviously you can choose the 190 or the 240 or off, but uh, I think 160 megahertz is a sweet spot. Okay, so the next mode is the custom mode three and I've set that to 3K raw mode, but we're shooting at 2.8K resolution. The reason for that is we get a much longer amount of record time and we get 24 frames per second in comparison to 20 frames or 18 frames at 3K. So if you want 24 frames per second, max you're gonna get is 2.8K resolution. Now for me personally, I reduce it to around 2.7K just so I get a bit more longer record time. I've been able to shoot more than five minutes and I had to stop it myself. So I think it can go for around 10 minutes or more with this mode, which I think is fantastic. It's also great for short films and travel videos. Um, you get that beautiful 2.8K resolution at 2.35 to one aspect ratio. And the aliasing performance is way, way better than the 1080 mode. Now there is a dedicated 2.8K presets. Um, I have tested that out and I haven't had much luck in getting good amounts of record time. I get better recording performance out of that mode. And so I choose to stick with that. The next mode is custom mode four. This has been set to 5K anamorphic mode. Don't get me wrong, this is not 5K resolution. This is a one by three binning mode to the sensor. So what that means is it's not true 5K quality. It's not one to one. So it's not gonna be as detailed as the 1080 mode. It's just gonna be slightly less. But I have to say sharpness isn't everything and it still looks filmic and there's no aliasing. So that's definitely a bonus if you wanna do YouTube or short films um, where you don't wanna see aliasing and stuff like that. So it's extremely clean. Uh, what you can see in the live view is that it's, it looks anamorphic like, so that will have to be stretched in post. Now I've set anamorphic mode at 16 by nine aspect ratio. So you're getting 1104 by 1867 resolution. It's continuous raw. Like I said, no aliasing. If you do want more resolution, go ahead and switch from 16 by nine aspect ratio to 2.35 to one, and you'll get more resolution. Now I've enabled 10 bit in that mode, so it's not too power heavy on the EOS M where you get dropped frames. So 10 bit should help ease the performance and obviously you do get continuous raw. Now to switch between framing and live view, what you do is just press the info button and that will show you what you're getting in frames and what you're getting real time. Real time is the actual motion that you're getting and framing is the frames that you're capturing through the raw video. So raw video is captured frame by frame and that's why it looks a bit jerky, a bit jittery it's because it's showing each frame that you're capturing from raw video. It's not like consumer cameras with H.264 where it's compressed and you can play back in camera. This is raw video, it's shooting frame by frame, it's capturing frame by frame, and that's why you have that jittery playback. Now custom mode five is a 4K or 5K raw time-lapse. You guys probably know how to set that up already. I've actually created a dedicated video. I'll leave that in the comments below on how to set that up perfectly because it does take time to understand. Uh, but that's a fantastic mode if you're on travel or short films and you want to capture people walking fast in the city or clouds moving in the sky or if you want to capture ships or boats on the harbour you can just get really creative with this mode go ahead and see the description i'll leave a video on how to set up 5k time lapse so that's it guys thanks for watching hope you got something out of it if you have any questions let me know in the comments below or on facebook um, as always give it a like if you enjoyed the video subscribe if you haven't already and I'll be uploading some more awesome content like this in the videos to come. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now. This will never end. Stupid masks.
Hello? We're sorry. The number you have reached is not in service. Hello? We just want to see if you're home so we can come over and do a few tests on your mind. What test are you talking about? Yeah, just, you know, the test to see if you're okay, feeling well. I've already taken a COVID test. I wasn't tested positive. Oh, okay, mate. I understand. Look... No, I'm okay. I'm fine. Are you sure, mate? Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. We'll be over in a few uh, minutes and we'll just do a few tests and then we'll just leave straight away. I don't need so. to be tested again. I've already been tested. What are you talking about? Yeah, but we don't know. You might not be feeling well. I'm absolutely fine. We're sorry. The number you have reached is not in service. Man, hopefully this thing will end soon. Gosh, I'm tired. It's been a busy day. Man, what's this mask on my face? <laughs> I had no caller ID. Why is he calling me without a caller ID? I wasn't tested positive. No. There's no way. Absolutely no way. Man, I love this camera. It just brings me so much joy to take photos out in the field and stuff like that. Man, I do miss traveling. One day, everything will be back to normal. Everything will be fine. This was like the best place. I love going to this place. Brings back good memories. If you're watching this, please stop answering your phone. These are not real testers, they're fake testers. You gotta stop doing it. Get out of the house right now, and if you can't, I've put.